uh, I'm very excited to have him here. I hope you are as well. So with no further ado, a great humanitarian, a super guy that needs no introduction, Mr. Tim Scott, uh, wherever you are, I don't see him there. I assume you're gonna spotlight him, there he is. And uh, welcome, sir. And thank you for taking the time. Hey, thank you all so much. Um, I can't show enough appreciation, Terry Wittorp and I, uh, for everything that you guys have done. It's just been a very pleasant surprise of how well you embraced uh, the Tithon and jumped in and, and committed and, and have donated year after year. Really appreciate it. Um, you guys are probably like the one of the five major clubs, including our original clubs, which is Kalamazoo TU and uh, St. Joe River Valley Fly Fishers uh, for helping out with everything that you guys are doing uh, with the Tython. It's, it's wonderful and I can't thank you guys enough uh, for the contributions that you guys do. Um, I know a lot of you know about the Tython, but I, I just wanna kind of go into a little more detail. A lot of people just kind of, they just do it. And a lot of you guys just do it and that's it. So uh, I'm going to run through a PowerPoint real quick, let you guys um, look at that. Uh, well, I'll get through it fairly quickly, uh, kind of give you some information that you may or may not know about the Tython, and then we'll do questions after. How's that? Excellent. Okay. And I'm set up to share a screen, right? Yes, you should be. And if I could remind everyone to please mute your mic uh, if you're not speaking. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Uh, Tython, of course, was started by uh, myself and Terry Wittor. Um, we are in our 15th year of the Tython. As some of you know, we do original artwork every year for the Tython. This just kind of shows some of the artwork um, that we've done, and I'll hit on that a little later. So the history of the Tython. Terry Wittorp and I just started this in 2006. He and I were driving up to Kalamazoo uh, Valley Chapter TU uh, meeting and Terry and I driving up and Terry's like, hey, I don't think we're gonna have enough flies for the, for the youth camp. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. You know, um, you should be able to uh, have enough of those flies. And everybody can see my slides, right? Uh, yes. Okay, all right, cool. Um, and I said, well, Terry, listen, I, I know I know 20 tires. We could tie 100 each, give you 2,000 flies, get you by for, for the, the youth camp. And Terry doesn't tie flies. So Terry, but Terry cooks like you wouldn't believe. So uh, Terry's like, you know what? Let's make a day of it. And we'll just get a bunch of people together, tie a bunch of flies. I'll cook lunch and we'll see where it goes. So that first year we, we gathered 2,500 flies, thought it was great had one of our club members, Bill Farkas, go, all right, what are we going to do next year? So next year turned into 14 years now, 15 years, mm -hmm. and we're over 156,000 flies. And if you put basically a $3 average on those flies, you know, just averaging it out, it's uh, close to $500,000 that we've done so far. So uh, and really what it is is just getting everybody to jump on board and tie flies. So a little bit about me, I grew up in St. Louis. Um, my dad was a beer brewer at Anheuser-Busch, by the way. Um, went to Mizzou, worked as a photographer, moved to South Bend. Uh, Terry uh, is from Jawajak, known him for uh, 20 years. We've been fishing together, um, fish all over the place. Terry fishes a lot in Montana. I fish a lot in uh, Colorado besides on the St. Joe River, um, right in our backyard. So. Uh, that's where we're from, um, and we just got to know each other through fly fishing, Kalamazoo, and St. Joe River Valley fly fishers. So, like I said, uh, we're really over 156,000 flies right now, and plenty of people that we've donated to, Anglers of the Sabo, Camp Kita uh, in Maine, which is a summer camp for kids, Real Recovery last year, uh, Brotherhood of Jungle Cock, Mayfly Project, all across the board, casting for recovery. We've done them a couple times. Um, as you guys know, we pick a cause that you either use as fly fishing uh, as an educational process, 
or therapy process in a nonprofit. That's our criteria and that's what we're doing. Uh, that's how we go about picking people and donating flies. Um, <clears throat> you can see from, we kicked it off in 2006, but we really didn't collect fly, flies until 2007. So you can see in with you guys help, this has really jumped. If you look from 2018 on 15,000 flies up to 20,000 flies, it's just incredible. I think we'll hit a goal of 21,000 flies this year. So, um, and right now we're at 8,100 flies committed uh, and that, that number is just gonna keep growing. So recipients, there's the whole list. Um, that is also on um, the Tython Facebook page. And um, just, I, I want everybody to know, we, we try to be transparent with what we're doing, that everything goes to a good cause. You know, um, every fly, 100% of them are mailed off as soon as it's done. And uh, the group gets it and they, they send really nice letters, which is kind of cool too. So right now uh, we've had flies from 37 states, uh, British Columbia, Nova Scotia, and America Samoa. And um, we'll be having uh, flies from Newfoundland uh, again uh, coming up, our New Brunswick area. So um, we're picking up Nebraska, I believe Arizona. I think Mark said that. Um, New Hampshire, and, and I got a call from a guy from New Jersey. So I met a lot of nice people kind of organizing this either by emails or by uh, Facebook or PM messages, anything like that, or even phone calls just out of the blue. I've had people call me and say, hey, we're sending flies. So it's probably, it's pretty cool that this thing has grown to cover that many states. Um, one cool story is my wife had, um, she she was on a plane coming back from Colorado. Guy gets on and he, he has a uh, it was a 2016 uh, Tython T-shirt, and she goes, "Oh, cool Tython!" And he goes, "Yeah, it's cool cause." She goes, "You might know my husband, Tim Scott." He goes, "No, I don't know him. Just knew about the program, and sent flies." So uh, it's kind of cool. So it's it's neat to see the T-shirts that we give out for every hundred flies that people donate. Uh, we send out a t-shirt, as you guys know. So um, one cool big boost that we got this summer was the Tython was featured in uh, Fly Tire Magazine. So RJ Pales, who's a member of our club, uh, was from Chicago, moved over to um, South Bend area. He, he's a freelance uh, writer and um, he wrote a story on us, thought it was pretty cool. And uh, Dave Klausmeyer, uh, read through it, loved it, published it, and I immediately started getting flies from people I didn't know. So that's kind of cool. So for the newbies in the group, uh, it's real easy. Pick a pattern, got a list of patterns, tie 100 flies to just that one pattern, and donate them. And the reason we pick, you know, like 100 flies is a good way to get, um, get an inventory built up of flies, but also you know, anybody can just donate money. And when people donate money, you really don't know where the cause goes. Or, you know, if you gave enough money to buy 100 flies, you know, you're not really connected to it. But the way I see it, when I'm tying my 100 flies, I'm really thinking about that cause and where those flies are going to go. And, you know, some kid in Maine at camp, um, you know, is going to use those flies. I think that I get a kick out of that more than anything when I'm sitting down tying those flies. And the whole idea is 100 flies seems like a lot, but it really isn't too bad. The other reason is it's really nice that you can pick one pattern, buy the materials for that one pattern. And I always thought about it like, you know, must dad always had hooks in 100, right? Box, buy, buy a box of hooks and then tie them up. You know, that's the way I've always thought about the tie time and tying that 100. And you're right chunking it out into different, you know, I usually on a, on a weekend, I do 25 at a time. I'll do 25 on Friday and probably 25 on Saturday, you know, or 70 or 50 on Saturday and then finish up the 25 on Sunday and you're done if you got the time to do that. So 
what patterns the tie? Uh, there's the list. Um, I know Mark's got the list and send it out to you guys. Um, in you know what we typically ask, you know, tie 100 of those, and that's it. If that's all you want to do, a lot of people have gone on to tie more, which is kind of fun. Flies aren't due until May 22nd, so uh, you got plenty of time. That's 54 days from now. So if you want to tie 10 flies uh, for every 54 days, we'll take it. And as you guys know, the 2021 recipient is Trout Unlimited Youth Camps. Uh, we talked to them at the national level. We're going to send all, hopefully, 21,000 flies to them and let them distribute them among the camps that are out there. So recipients, let's talk about them. We kind of hit on these casting for recovery. We were the first uh, when casting for recovery in Michigan started their program, gave them flies to donate. What all these people have in common, all these organizations have in common is, as we all know, when you got to fly fish, when you just get into the sport, the one thing that you need is, is flies. In it's like ammo. And if you go out target shooting or we had a, we had a active military guy who was wounded from um, uh, healing waters who came and um, was at one of our program. We got a slide of that. Um, he literally said, Hey, it's like ammo. It's like a guy going through boot camp. You don't get, get proficient with a rifle until you um, shoot off so much ammo. And he goes, same with thing as we all know, sticking flies and trees and banks and logs and everything else. The more flies that a kid would have or someone going through cancer that can go out on the stream, the better off they are. And we all know what flies cost. Um, it's the one thing that you're going to lose more of or you can't get fixed like a rod or buy new wine. You need flies. So that's why we think it's important to get flies to people. Here's some pictures from uh, Real Recovery. Uh, we've had a uh, gentleman in our group uh, go through the Real Recovery program in, in Texas, a firm believer, and we literally dedicated uh, the flies to Real Recovery last year because we had two of our close members die from cancer. And um, one uh, gentleman, he did go through the Real Recovery program. So it touches home with us. And and here it is, Mr. Roberts, Dr. Roberts, who uh, was a dentist in the area. That's him closest in the frame. That's his uh, son who ties every year. Now his daughter is actually tying as well. So three generations sit down tying flies, which is amazing. Mayfly Project was pretty dear to me. I used to live in Maine, uh, know where this camp is. And that was kids that just needed normal summer camp that use fly fishing. <clears throat> and this camp is designed for kids who their parents uh, or some relative in their family committed suicide. And it was a way that there's three siblings that started the camp and um, their father died from suicide. And this one thing that they kind of lost uh, their whole perspective of is not having a summer, not having summer camp. So they literally started this. We saw them called them up and say, hey, we're gonna donate flies to you. And that's kind of the fun job of this is calling up a recipient and just saying, hey, by the way, uh, we're gonna give you guys flies. So um, this was the TU uh, National Youth Camp that was up in uh, Maine, I mean, Michigan, uh, two years ago. And they took advantage of the flies there, sent us a nice little note, casting for recovery from Indiana great ladies, great work that they do. Uh, we've donated flies to them twice. Uh, we had a gentleman, Bob Stoinhoff, who tied, I uh, believe it was over 200 of these hoppers and gave them to Real Reco or Casting for Recovery Indiana and said, hey, sell them as pins or whatever you want to do with them. Um, all in pink for uh, breast cancer. So in, in, it was in the name of Lorianne, who uh, was a good friend of his who died from um, breast cancer. So that's the, the kind of, in, in all this craziness in the world, this is stuff that I love. So this is after the culmination. Um, 
in Elkhart uh, at the Conservation Club. They donate the club to us. This is a group uh, from Casting from Covery two years ago. I hope we get past this whole COVID thing. You guys can come over. I know Mark's talked about uh, putting a group to come over. We'd love to have you. Project Healing Waters. Um, this guy up in the upper left holding the box with the cane. He was from Maine. He and I, uh, I knew where he grew up. Uh, him and the one down in the lower corner, and there was about four others. They were actually active military that were wounded during um, the Baghdad, um, the conflict over in Iraq, uh, where we were, they were setting up the green zone in Baghdad. These guys were all wounded uh, in IUD accidents. Um, and the one in the top corner, he goes, the best thing for him was sit down time flies again and be able to know that he was gonna go fly fish. And at the time, Project Heal uh, Healing Waters brought these guys out and it was a really good guy who was on the board at the time, he's no longer on the board. Uh, he goes, listen, I'm gonna make sure some active military come out and see you guys. And it was really moving. And these were the guys that said, you know, flies are like ammo, you know, we need it for practice. Um, another good group, I don't know if you guys have heard of these, Flying Heroes of Michigan. They're basically um, ex-military who have started, uh, started that program again and uh, kind of a local program. They do a lot of stuff where they do a lot of streamer fishing and do a lot on the Pier Marquette. There's Terry Nye uh, with um, Casting for Recovery Michigan. That's the, their start. And that's after our party. We uh, pull all the flies together, take a picture. So party's kind of cool. That's Elkhart Conservation Club. If anybody's been over there, it's got a great little trout stream in there. And uh, St. Joe River Valley Fly Fishers also, um, they uh, also pay and help support uh, brown trout hatchery uh, there. So if you caught brown trout in Northern Indiana, good chance they came out of the hatchery there. Um, so we, we have a little party there in April. Now it's gonna be May 22nd, if everything goes right with COVID. Don't know about that, so uh, stay tuned for that. I'll let you guys know if we're gonna do it or not. Uh, I probably doubt that we'll do it unless, uh, you know, the vaccine gets out to everybody. I know I'm probably one of the last ones on the list, so. But it's always a good time. We have guys from Dune Land and Little, uh, Little Elkhart TU, Kalamazoo, all come over, Fly Girls, and, and tie with us. There's Ann Miller. I think you guys might know Ann Miller. Uh, she's a good friend of mine. Talk to her every week. We're always talking fly, fly time. Um, fly Girls have really stepped up as well as you guys. Um, and they're jumping on board and pretty excited about it. Uh, this is... Eric Gilbert, who's helping Mark Bardis tie. We lost Eric Gilbert. Actually, it was last year. We lost him uh, to cancer. There's a hundred blue wing olives. Uh, it's amazing how a hundred little flies can fit in such a tiny little box, but um, we know they're going to a good cause. Um, Ira Hannon, um, they come over from Chicago to tie. Little wild card chapter, they help out. Again, just a big picture. We'll, we'll put tying instructions up on the screen, just kind of break up the day. And of course, like you guys, a lot of people turn in flies way before this happens. This turns into more of a party. So Jeff Stanifer teaching a fly that he's tying. Let's see. And we are getting kids. We're getting some younger people involved, which is awesome. Um, you know, Everybody's like, well, I don't know if I'm good enough to tie or not. You know, we've had 13 year olds, 14 year olds tie flies. We've had younger tie flies. And again, you can see it even in someone who's brand new, never tied. I, I've done little one on one instructions with people to kids who never tied. And it's amazing to see them, you know, they'll do two or three and then walk away from the vice and then come back later or another day, but they'll tie and their, their flies get better too. Like uh, I think Mark or someone was saying, you sit down and 
you do that repetition, as you all know, with 100 flies, everybody's going to get better. More party picks. Uh, there's Curly uh, Hudson with the ponytail from um, Three Rivers over in Fort Wayne. They've jumped on board. They, um, they're up there in about 2,500 flies or so that they donate every year to. And then John Mangona, member of St. Joe. And that's how it stacks up. That's uh, two years ago, I believe, 15,600 flies all ready to go. Uh, we do get, I mean, we'll take flies at any time. Don't get me wrong. We do get flies after the deadline, which is no big deal. We always take them. I've done extra boxes of flies and mail it on after the big batch of flies have gone out. Um, and, you know, it's always good, always good to pass on flies. At a certain point, we'll do a cutoff and then we'll start collecting them for the next year. <clears throat> that was the group two years ago. Uh, party food. Uh, this is Terry Wittorp. Like I said, Terry doesn't tie, but uh, he cooks a hell of a lunch. Uh, one year to deep fried turkeys, um, a lot of marinated flank steaks. Um, Billy Vale, other people who don't tie flies usually will come over, help out in the kitchen. Uh, even Billy, you know, will sit down and buy flies um, and turn them in. But Terry, um, Terry and I have fished in Muskegon one time. We pull over, he breaks out a grill, and he's cooking, you know, two-inch uh, pork chops marinated, plus salad, plus wine, everything. Goes full tea with uh, the lunch, which is pretty cool. And like I said, other people jump in, help out. Terry's got a full menu. Um, serve that up. That's all free for anybody who wants to come over. We just want, want to know who's coming over. So um, if they're coming over, they're, we're going to have plenty of food for lunch. So, and it's not to say a couple bottles of wine or a couple bottles of scotch, bourbon get opened up too. Because uh, it is a bit of a celebration. It is a good time to get to know everybody and uh, have a good conversation. So let's get past the COVID so we can do more of that. And flies from one of the cool parts of my job is getting flies in. And like today, went out to the mailbox. There's a box of flies coming in today, every day. And then you got groups like yourself, you guys all sitting down individually tying. Uh, this is a group um, called Fly Girls West. These are uh, fly girls that go up to Traverse City, uh, go to Ann Miller's place, sit down and tie. They'll crank out about five, 600 flies for the weekend, have a good time, um, and then donate those. And we get bins, start collecting flies. Uh, I think our bins would probably rival any fly shop that's out there right about now. So, but what I try to do is take a good picture of someone's flies. They're really proud of donating them. And if I got their email in that or on Facebook, I'll post it and say, Hey, we got flies in just so everybody's confirmed that they, their flies got to us. Um, I'll be talking to this group tomorrow, doing the same presentation, the ladies, um, Colorado women's fly fishers, um, Two years ago, they jumped on board. I don't even know how we got connected, but um, uh, Jane Rutherford, a few other people uh, that I met through this group, and I go to Colorado a lot. Some of these just live around the corner from my niece, and I don't know how they got connected to us, maybe through Facebook, but then they've jumped on board, and this was their time party two years ago because they couldn't get together last year. They did donate flies, but um, it was for, you know, um, they got, some people got together before the COVID, but, um, they get together, they're, they're having a good time. Uh, <laughs> they got food and booze and everything going as well, just like the rest of us. So again, back to how you tie it. Um, this is one of my ties a couple of years ago. I tie almost every night. Um, I got a pretty cool bench that my wife custom built for me. So I sit down. It is just something I've always done, sit down and tie. So I do a little more assembly time where, um, like for 
these um, Mickey fins, we'd sit down, put all the bodies together, and then sit down and put the wings together. So there are ways and tricks that you can think of that kind of take that daunting task of a hundred flies and break it down. Uh, one of the other big things is, is like, you know, Mark was mentioning earlier, someone was saying, just sit down, do 10 flies in 10 days, you're done. You know, we got until, uh, May 22nd, just sit down and do 10 flies. Um, I got a little more time on my hands. Um, the way I schedule my time on the weekends, I can usually bang out 25, get it done in over a three day weekend, uh, which is kind of fun. So um, it's cool to see all those flies get knocked out. I get excited now in my life. I was telling my wife the other day, she was asking what I was tying. It's like, I'm actually tying something for myself, which um, <laughs> is a little different from time to time. That kind of feels good too. And then you don't have to crank out a, a uh, hundred flies, but what I do a lot of times, cut everything up, put lead on the hooks, get all the body materials ready to go, and then start time. And there you go. That all took place over a weekend for me. But I know other people stretch it out, which is absolutely fine. And again, I go to a couple different shows, um, and people will donate flies. And again, it's really neat getting everything in the mail. It, uh, it's a good time. These guys up in Wisconsin, Dan Siminski, uh, this is a Project Healing Waters group that gets together and they tie. Then you get cool letters. You know, this guy was in the, or having lost a brother in the Navy, I can put, uh, I cannot put in the words admiration you have for uh, those who serve. Project Healing Waters is remarkable. Here's some flies that they help. And um, we get these from all over, which is kind of cool. And we save all those too. Just more flies. Like you said, I'll, I'll do some shows. This was the Michigan Fly Tying Expo a few years back. Just got this two days ago, bunch of little beetles um, in a note. Uh, Jane's in South Carolina now, or South Dakota now. She was in uh, Colorado. Again, uh, people of all ages, time for us. A lot of times we will get, um, we'll get flies that aren't on the list and that's quite all right because we know they're gonna go somewhere where people are gonna use them. Um, we will never turn down flies. Um, we know that they're always gonna go to good cause. This guy did all these homemade poppers like this. It's amazing, I got last year, I got a hundred musky flies. I mean, beautiful streamers. Half of them were articulated. And he goes, I know someone will use them. I sat down, tied all these. I'm not going to use them all. So I sent them in. This guy made the most incredible poppers, sent those in. And um, they're just beautiful, just different. And not one is exactly alike. They're all different, which was kind of cool. Tim Pote, um, big supporter of the Tython, member of St. Joe River Fly Fishers, just lost him a month ago. Um, and this is his granddaughter that he was teaching flies, how to tie flies. And he was, um, <clears throat> he would come to shows with me and just was a great salesman for the Tython. And yes, I did tie 100 zoo cougars and we had other people tie 100 zoo cougars. Once they were on the list for Flying Heroes, um, again, assembly type process was the best way to do that. And I know, and I don't know if the guy who tied these from your club is on here. This picture, um, I've gotten so many uh, remarks about this picture because of how nice and neat these flies are. I had to take this picture. Uh, just amazing to get these. Um, yeah, and that's me, the cool thing. Let me chime in. What was that? Let me chime in for a second. Steve Schwoyer, he's a dentist. Yeah. I took a picture of those flies when he gave them to me. And honestly, you could sell this to Getty and use it for wallpaper, man. It is just, I mean, it's perfect. There's yeah, a it's awesome. He has anal small motor plus. So Steve Schwoyer, yep. one of our guys. 
Well, Steve, I want to thank you. It was um, just beautiful. I'm, I'm a photographer by trade. I had to take a good picture of those. So that I know has been on a lot of wallpaper for a lot of computer screens. A little busy, but it, uh, it was on mine for quite some time. Um, again, more flies, more thank yous. And that's cool to read all those. We compiled all those. We got those. I don't know what we're going to do with them sometime, but uh, we, we do have them. And, um, you know, again, in this crazy day and age, this is just something positive. Uh, there's Fly Girls East, um, you know, Schultz Outfitters in Ypsa, Ypsilanti. Um, please patronize them. He allows them to come in. Tie flies helps them set up, uh, gets discounts on materials, helps them out. Uh, been a big supporter of the Tython. Never met the guy in my life. Talked to him once. Um, great shop. Been in there. Tried to track him down. Gave him a T-shirt. Uh, he was out guiding up the day that I came in. But so we got Fly Girls West and Fly Girls East, which I call. They all sit down and tie. Three Rivers. Uh, this one year, the fifteen hundred. So into support like you guys a lot of clubs this is starting to be a, a good trend for us is a lot of clubs jumping on board and helping out um we terry came up with this idea i didn't know what it was going to do our budget we're, we're working on that type of thing uh actually working on uh the tython becoming a 5013c so um we can get corporate donations to pay for t-shirts and things like that um, the local clubs have been very supportive of helping out, but uh, Andy Kitson went to the Chicago Art Institute, big fly fisherman. He is Amish Trout. If you guys have ever heard of Amish Trout in northern in Indiana over by Middlebury, um, he does a piece of artwork every year uh, for the Tython. You guys have made the t-shirt the last couple years. Um, with your donations, we're adding like the major contributors. So St. Joe, um, uh, Little Elkhart, uh, Dunlin, Drift, and Three Rivers, Fly Girls, and uh, Kalamazoo. You usually make it. Colorado women, uh, Fly Fishers are going to make it again this year. This t-shirt, which is the center one, that's the artwork that's going to go on the t-shirt. It will have, uh, I think, around the kind of the U-frame, um, underneath the elbows, we'll have the uh, club names. That's the only piece of artwork we don't have for that yet. So um, so Andy Kitson, he, he literally, I tell him, all right, hey, it's coming up. He goes, yeah, 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 I got to dream about it. He literally dreams about, uh, <laughs> programs his mind to dream about it to come up with the artwork. The 2013 was a little homage to me, which I like. And for those who are deadheads, it's based off of a uh, Grateful Dead poster when he came to this, when Grateful Dead came to St. Louis, I think back in the 70s. And he kind of took that mo montage and ran with it. So Andy's great, <clears throat> just does a great job with artwork. And the guy that really makes the, the t-shirts pop is Brian Pletcher. He's a, he's a longtime friend and I've known him and Andy for uh, about 24 years now. Um, Brian and market Martin marketing and Elkhart. Um, he is, if anybody knows screen printing, which I'm sure some of you guys do, uh, there's good ones and there's bad ones. And this guy is amazing. He, he works with Andy and they make sure this thing will uh, truly pop and make sure it looks really good. And um, it doesn't get muddy. They, they really take pride in, in making the t-shirt. So that's their contribution. So again, uh, thank you guys so much. You're on this list. St. Joe River Valley Fly Fishers, Kalamazoo, Andy Kitson, Brian Pletcher, Ann Miller, John Mazarkowitz, Elkhart Conservation Club, Doolin, Lil Elkhart, Fly Girls, Three Rivers Drift. Dave Rumsfeld has actually donated artwork to us on a regular basis. Loon has dedicated or uh, donated to us the Lee Wolf chapter to you. I just did a presentation Saturday to the regional TU uh, board on the Tython, and they're they're going to try to uh, push the Tython among all the the TU clubs or the Michigan TU uh, regional chapter. 
Schultz, I still shop at Hargroves in St. Louis. Um, great little shop. Uh, he helps us out with the Tython as well. So good, good causes. 59% um, of the flies, the total number of flies that we've collected over the 14 years have come from these donors. And these are all donors that, um, and I do keep track. So all you guys who are tying flies for drift, your numbers are adding up too. So we, we just um, highlighted those that have donated a thousand flies or more um, all the way down. Todd Azell, who is a member of our club, St. Joe River Valley Fly Fishers, past president a couple of times. That man's amazing. He, he donates 7,800 flies. A couple of years, he would, he would literally go, I'm going to give you 100 of every pattern on the list. So think about that. I mean, we all think about, okay, I've already cranked out 200 flies. It's like, okay, um, you know, do 1,200 flies or 1,500 flies. Uh, Todd would sit down. Yep, no problem. That's what I'm going to do. So, um, so I look forward to this list growing. It's it's amazing, um, and that's all what we're doing is literally saying to people, "Hey, you guys are the one that really make the tie on." Uh, you know, Terry and I might be the front men for it, but we're just convincing you guys this is a good cause, and. Um, this thing would no way be successful without the help of everybody sitting down and twisting something on a hook. And um, it's a simple concept, but I think it's, it's well worth it. That's it. So um, I'll stop sharing and anybody uh, open for questions. Well, Tim, nice job, buddy. Uh, I appreciate it. I think everybody's going to have a little bit deeper insight of what this is all about and your passion for this program. Uh, I had a question earlier that we talked about it and I forgot what it was, but you said it was a good question. If you remember, maybe we can tell everybody since everyone's here. Oh, um, was it about taking flies that aren't on the list? Well, we could talk about is, that. Yeah, we could talk about that. We will. I mean, the whole reason for the list is to get a build, a bank build inventory of flies. So, you know, if one person tied one original pattern of 100 flies, it might go to one club or one camp. And they might, you know, they'll have that to fish. You know, might be able to give it out. But like, if everybody, if we get, which we will, we'll get probably 5,000 pheasant tails. Everybody knows that needs to be in the box. That's what we'll get, you know. And there are people that donate, you know, foam spiders and different things like that. That's all good. They'll end up getting used somehow, some way. But that whole idea is to give enough to a camp, not knowing how many people are going to have that camp, that everybody's going to get enough to fish. Is there any particular fly on your list that you don't get enough of? Um, usually like Adams. Okay. And um, right now, like squirmy worms, or you can even do a San Juan worm. It doesn't even have to be a squirmy worm. Um, and uh, what else? Um, scuds. Which... Um, you know, there's some parts of the world that you fish a scud under everything that you 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 float. Right. You guys go to Arkansas, you guys know that. Right. So right now, those are are the ones. <clears throat> and then um, I think I'll if I got I know I got your email, Mark. Um, what we'll do is you know at least once a week or every other week, just put out a status of what's going on with the Tython, and I'll put out you know, what we need in flies. Okay, cool. Well, let's open it up to questions from the group. Anybody got anything they want to ask Tim? I'd just like to say, Tim, I was <clears throat> very impressed by the presentation and it really gives us a, a better fix, picture what the tie is and where everything goes. I just, 
the whole the whole country is covered with uh, Tyathon tires, and uh, that's just great. Thank you. Yeah, um, it's really grown in the last probably four or five years. Um, I attribute that to Facebook for the good that Facebook can be, um, or any social media. You know, uh, everything's positive. I've only had two curmudgeons, I think, in the the 15 years that we've done. You know, and it is really cool to meet some really just incredible people, just like all you across the country, that think it's a cool idea in this country. Tim, I have a question. Um, I am, this is my first sure. year uh, doing tie, uh, flies for the tie and I'm doing the soft tackle fly. Do they all have to be the exact same color within that pattern? No, they do not. So that's the beauty of it. You can tie multiple colors. You can tie one color if you want. You can do whatever you want to do. Um, people are like, do I need to tie a certain pattern a certain way? No. It's just like rock and roll. Someone plays a song a different way. Everybody's individual. I love seeing that individuality come out and flies how they want to tie it. Okay. The other thing is, if you guys are on Facebook, I do have a video section where I have been doing step-by-step -step ties. And they're not really explaining it. You'll see those steps. You can stop the video wherever you want and look at it. Uh, but every pattern that we're tying, there's a video on there, step-by-step -step, how to tie it, if anybody needs that for inspiration. So Tim, question on uh, barbed and barbless. Do you want, do you have any uh, preference? No, no preference at all. Uh, personally, I do everything barbless, uh, except for some steelhead flies. Uh, but you got to think about it. You know, they could smash those barbs down if they want to. Um, if it's a practice or a policy with your guys' group, we'll take barbless. Um, so you'll, you'll take you know, them smash, you'll take them smash down. Take them smash down either way. And what we do is everybody that we, um, donate to we tell them that there's a mix of barbed or barbless flies in there because you know some kid or someone new to fly fishing might need that barb just to to be successful yeah, as long as it doesn't go in the back of their ear right exactly <laughs> anybody else questions yeah, let me, another question, Tim. Um, you know, the artwork that you do, have, have you been thinking about doing a poster or anything? Yeah, we actually did a poster of the 2013 one. Um, um, Andy Kitson was kind of playing around with that. We did uh, do that. We did sell out of them. Uh, he made up a, a series of those posters. Um, but I think I'm going to broach that with him again think about doing some more posters because not everybody wants a t-shirt at times but they might want the artwork as well right i mean it's it's great artwork to put on the wall yeah thanks bob uh yeah i'll talk to him about that okay great can't believe we're done already come on guys you got no questions for tim he came all this way <laughs> So I'm, Actually, I, got a question, I got a question for Tim and Mark. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm a, you know, I just joined a few years ago and, you know, I get into the club and they said, Hey, we got this uh, tie a thon, do a hundred flies. And really didn't know exactly what was going on or really, you know, wasn't sure what the uh, full benefit and, you know, what it was for. I did my hundred and, you know, I was glad. Uh, but the presentation that you just gave, gave me a lot more insight. Um, and if we could do something like that, Mark, you know, in a smaller version to everybody in the club to understand a little bit more, uh, would really help in uh, promoting it and understanding it a little bit more. Well, to, to answer that and into my defense, and I, hopefully Tim will back me up. This certainly has been something that has been on his radar and my radar for at least the last three years. 
there has been a very concerted effort to get him to come to COD on an evening to meet <laughs> you guys uh, for this whole thing to be revealed. And tonight is the culmination of a lot of uh, roadblocks. We had a weather event. Uh, we had COVID. And so tonight uh, we have the benefit of this technology and, and Tim was gracious enough to make himself available and gave a beautiful presentation. So we thank you, sir. And, uh, but yeah, maybe going forward, we can do something more with this. Uh, it was educational yeah. for me too, Bob, to be honest with you. I mean, he and I have spoken many times, but, you know, I, we never really got this deep with it. So, you know, we all learned something tonight, myself included. If I could, yeah, in, in, if I could possibly a shorter presentation. Yep. And you know, if we could uh, get that and actually give it to the club. Well, this I, is going to be, this is re being recorded. And so what we're going to do is we're going to post it on our Facebook page. And okay. So we will have that. Yeah, and I do have a shorter version, Mark, I can send over to you that I did. I did a five minute one for TU Michigan, the regional chapter on Saturday. So I, I do have one pared down to basically the beginning slides, and ending slides, a couple uh, images in between. But yeah, Bob, it's been very organic. Um, and it's been word of mouth and it's just like, boom, here's the flies where we this year with COVID and figuring out the whole Zoom and people having more Zoom meetings, um, it's kind of been a benefit for us. Like like I said, last year we broke a record, 20,300 flies. And I think COVID had a lot to do with it. You know, all the bad things that COVID came out, you know, people were sitting around tying flies. And now with people doing these type meetings, um, it allows me to do more of this. I've been trying to get over to you guys club for, I think about three years with just weather COVID. I mean, literally we were scheduled to come over last year and uh, your the the school over the Tacoma school, they closed. They closed like the day before or the day of when we we're gonna come over and do it. So uh, I appreciate everybody jumping on this and, and doing it. Um, I had a guy in, he's on the border between he's got a club out there uh in washington and idaho and he really wanted me to come out in march and i go i don't think that's going to happen yeah. talk about the tython but this allows me to get out there pretty pretty reasonably and cheap for for any club or anybody so i mean i'm offering up more presentations we've never done that before either here's a question for you tim how many people and it seems like because I, I have personal experience with this, that people that get involved with you, it becomes almost a relationship. So my question is, is how many people that participate in the Tiathon come back year after year after year in whatever small way they choose to participate? Um, I've had more repeat people come back than fall off. And um, I've had two guys that from the very, besides the three that I, I mentioned that passed away, you know, that are in the presentation because they, they've been there since day one. Um, I've had two other tires, older gentlemen who like their daughter said, hey, uh, dad passed away and um, you won't be getting flies. But usually I've had more people come on board and continue to, and that's why those numbers are growing too, uh, that are time. There are more and more every year. I mean, first year we did t-shirts, I think we printed like 30 t-shirts. And this past year, I think we sent out 150. You printed over 30 just for us. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And so we're kind of looking at those trends and those numbers as well. The other interesting fact, which I forgot to mention earlier, is last year, in the last five years, we got 100% of the flies that people committed to, which I think is really amazing because in the 14 years that we've collected flies, I can't say anything about this year yet because we haven't gotten them all, 
But in the 14 years, I typically, or Terry and I, because Terry would collect flies too up in Michigan, um, we have a handful of people that would commit but not actually turn in flies. And it would be typically 300. So when I put out, we sent out 20,300 flies, we, we did, and that's what we were expected to get. Wow. And that has only been in the last like five years, we've had 100% participation or otherwise the years prior, the, the most that we did not receive was about 300 flies, which is still a great return on, you know, any advertiser would like that type of return, huh? You bet. <laughs> well, what do you say, guys? Anything else for Tim? I have one more thing. Uh, the, my biggest takeaway tonight was we got to see who the end users were. It's very, it's very inspirational to get a glimpse at the the uh, soldiers and the kids and the and the disabled people that are the end users. It makes it a lot easier to tie when you have uh, a face in mind or you've got a, an organization in mind, and uh, to know that those are real people out there tying these flies and tying these flies on the end of their line and hoping to catch a fish with them. It's just, uh, it's just, uh, makes it so much easier to sit there in front of that vice and just keep, uh, tying away. So thank you for that. Well, thank you. And that, that is very important. And that's why I wanted to include pictures of just the thank you letters and, and photos that they send me of, Hey, these are the people that caught fish with the flies you sent. I think, Dennis, you hit it right on the head. That's that's the whole reason why we're doing it. Um, and that's kind of why, you know, we, we try to avoid the money thing, which is getting harder as this thing grows. But that's why I want flies from someone. And in our, our, our whole operational statement is basically, we don't want money, we want flies. Because that means a lot. Because you, I think we all probably donate money to causes and go, okay, we if you felt good for a little while, but sitting down tying all those flies and then saying, you know, seeing a kid that caught a fish with a fly that someone had tied, it could be your fly. I think that means a lot. I think that in, we all know, I don't know if you guys remember, I remember, I flat out remember the first fly I tied and first fish I caught. And, and that means a lot. Well, what do you say, guys? Are we gonna we got more for him, or are we gonna cut him loose? I do have a quick question. I have a question, Tim. Go ahead, Doug. The individuals who receive the flies, do they get a sampling of all the flies that are on the list? And if so, how is it given to them? Is it in like a little small uh, fly box that they receive? So different people do different things, like uh, Cam Kita. They just work out of the boxes that we give them, you know, so like kids are going out to, to fish at the camp. So they're like, all right, we're, we'll put together a little box supplies and go out. I know Kalamazoo youth, I think Illinois did the same thing to you. Uh, they, they put together boxes of flies for them. So we give them just like you would see kind of like at a, a fly shop. We give them the big plastic bins of flies, how they distribute, that's up to them. And I don't get caught up in that too much because I think they're all going to do the right thing with the right, you know, with the flies. And same thing with casting for recovery. And I know in Indiana and in, in Michigan, they actually will put together little fly boxes for people um, to take those flies home. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Anybody else? I just want to make a quick little announcement. And while Tim's here too, you can watch his reaction. Drift is going to make a financial donation along with our flies when we send them. So there'll be a check included. Uh, we felt that over the years, and it doesn't take a genius to do the math. It can't be cheap printing 30 or 40 shirts. So, and I hope to get the 40 shirts this year. That's my goal. Uh, so we're going to help offset that cost. And, and maybe you can tell us a little bit more, because you and I had this conversation a, a while back when we talked that uh, you've, you, you've come to this reality that 
you know, we need to maybe turn this into something a little different. We're going to be a fight. We're, we're going to start looking for spot. And then we were throwing ideas at each other, different people that we thought might be good. But where did that hole go and how's that coming? Well, that's interesting. I heard from, so oh. let me back up. The, the, the Tython, the whole idea was we weren't going to, we weren't going to get money involved, but yeah, like everything, it has to. Um, up until now, Kalamazoo TU in a larger consent, uh, percent has been St. Joe River Valley Fly Fishers have funded the t-shirts and, you know, the dinner for the party. Now, Terry and I, we do a lot behind the scenes with our own money, um, which that's just all part of us doing what we need to do. But it's grown so much. It's gone from, you know, 30 t-shirts to what it is now. Um, we've decided to go to non nonprofit status because uh, I had a nice conversation with the president of Loon, which please support Loon. I'm sure you guys do. He's really interested in the Tithon. Uh, gave us uh, a check for $200 a couple years back, just a small amount because we we're kind of looking for um, sponsorship because we got to offset it. And I really I appreciate that, what you guys are doing. I thank you guys for what you're doing, but you guys are donating flies. We want to keep it to that. So we're going to look towards the corporate route, you know, a, a vice company, probably, um, you know, uh, a tools manufacturer like Loon, um, some material manufacturers or distributors uh, for that situation. All the money that has brought in for the Tithon or donated to the Tithon goes through uh, St. Joe River Valley Fly Fishers as their 501, uh, their nonprofit. So what we want to be able to do is do our own uh, so we can get a little more corporate sponsor. So there's a complete mission focus on the Tithon to allow people like Loon, Hairline Dubbing, Renzetti, any of those people to say, yeah, we want to, we want to donate to the cause and help you guys out. So, um, so that's what we're doing. I, we completely appreciate the clubs uh, financially. You guys, thank you so much for that. That that's amazing. St. Joe River Valley, Kalamazoo, uh, Little Elkhart to you, and Three Rivers um, are the ones that have are now or have been stepping up to help finance in the last couple of years. So, but there's plenty of corporate people out there. The only thing that we haven't have been the misgivings on is literally putting corporate sponsors on the t-shirt which I, I know it's done but the t-shirts look pretty damn cool without corporate sponsors but if we got to go that route we go that route because uh you know we're shipping things all over the world now cool well if nobody else has any more tim my brother thank you my man for coming uh, it's been a long time for us to get together like this. Uh, hopefully we can do it in person sometime. We definitely want to come to your barbecue. Yeah. Uh, uh, we are working uh, enthusiastically, I would think would be a fair word to help you out. I think everybody has embraced this concept. Uh, I have been overwhelmed year after year with the participation of our group and they continue to impress me. Uh, hopefully this year we will eclipse last year's uh, numbers. That's my goal. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again. So uh, this is just goodbye for a while. We'll see you soon, I hope. Yep. Well, thank you so much. You guys are just been amazing. Uh, truly appreciate it. And um, anybody has any questions after the fact that Mark's got my information, you can get a hold of me. Um, if you're uh, coming over to Southwest Michigan, uh, Northwest Indiana to fish, need a scouting report, let me know. I'm a block and a half off the St. Joe. So, yeah. All right. All Thanks, right. Everybody. Hey, 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 thank you very much. Thank you. Bye, you guys. Anybody who hasn't done, uh, gotten on the list here, if they want to stay on, let me know. All right. Thank you all. Peace.